Welcome into your PFF Draft Review, powered by PFF Edge and Elite. Today it's all about the Jacksonville Jaguars, Mike, and it's really interesting to see where their roster is right now. You know, when we're doing mock drafts, and I'm not saying you have to always fill needs, but when you look at the roster, there's never this, you know, perfect, clear need on the Jaguars roster right now. They've really developed these last couple seasons, and in round one, they go back to the defensive line, a place where they had one of the best lines in the entire league last year, so they're just adding more talent to already, you know, current strengths on the roster. Yeah, you look at the defense side of the ball, there might not be actually a need, you know, in terms of, you know, position that you have to get better at uh, this upcoming season. That's why they're one of the best defensive defenses in the NFL. But I still like the pick in Taven Bryan because what they're building isn't just a next year thing. It's a down the line. They want to be a dominant defense, and they have the corners to do it for the next five to ten years. And so they're drafting a guy like Taven Bryan, who might be a little raw coming out, but has flashed this high-level play at times there at Florida. It's gotten better every single year and is an incredibly freaky athlete, probably the best athlete on the defensive interior in this entire draft class, banking on the fact that he's going to learn from guys like Clayus Campbell. He's going to learn from guys like Malik Jackson. Might not play a thousand snaps right away, but when those guys are ready to move on, ready to retire, he steps in and the dominance continues. Yeah, I mean, he really had a breakout season in 2017. 89.1 overall grade. You can check out all the grades in the PFF a draft guide, all a part of PFF Edge and Elite. There were, play, there were times when Brian just looked like the best player on the field. Texas A&M game, you know, that burst off the line of scrimmage. Uh, former just three-star recruit out of Wyoming who, like you said, got better every year, broke out, showed well at the combine, so the athleticism showed up on the field, it showed up in shorts, and I think that's what the Jags really like. Yeah, you can see the rawness there as well. A lot of reps, he gets dumped on the ground immediately at the snap. He fires off the ball. You see that. He's always the first guy off the ball along that Florida defensive line. But then sometimes he'll just fire off willy-nilly, be completely out of control on offensive linemen. All he has to do is get his pads under him and puts him on the floor. So some ugly reps there, but like I said, the high-level play was there as well. So that's encouraging moving forward. And like I said, they don't have to, he doesn't have to contribute right away. He doesn't have to be a stud right away. If he's a stud year two, year three, then it's still a great pick. Yeah, they see the value in that defensive line and keeping it strong as they continue to grow every single year. Round two, they go DJ Chark out of LSU. They were already talking about potentially moving up to go get him. That's what they were saying at their post-game press conferences. They really liked Chark. Uh, he was a guy that has one thing that he does extremely well, and I understand why teams covet that. 4-3-4 four, four speed that does show up on the field. You know, some guys have game speed, some guys have the track speed. He has both. They show up, they merge on the field. He is a legitimate deep threat, but probably not one of the more polished receivers in this class. Yeah, in Blake Bortles' best season, though, as a pro, back in 2015, he was the most productive deep thrower in the NFL. They went deep a lot, and that translated to a lot of offensive yardage, a lot of points on offense. That's when they didn't have, though, the defense to match. This past season, not nearly the same, and the past two years, not nearly the same in terms of their deep ability. But Shark is a bona fide deep threat. He was one of the most productive receivers in the FBS last year, is a freak of nature athletically sub 4, 440, 40-inch vertical, has checks all those boxes. Now he's nowhere near a polished or finished product, no, not going to step in and be a true number one. But as a complimentary piece, he's going to make defense have to account for him week in and week out. How does he compare to Will Fuller from a couple years ago? Because that was the comparison that came to mind. Because I, you know, when I saw Will Fuller a couple years ago, he had the speed. He's a deep receiver. He went in the first round. But he wasn't great in contested situations, probably a little bit. Uh, better all-around receiver than Chark, but Chark had 572 deep yards last year out of 873. So we're talking mm -hmm. pretty much only. all of his yards. You know, the big chunk of his yards were just deep passes, and in his career only forced three missed tackles on 71 career receptions. I mean, I called Will Fuller a one-trick pony a couple mm -hmm. of years ago. Chark is that plus even more. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head there with the after the catch ability. Fuller was a weapon on screens, a weapon on underneath sort of stuff. Chark is not that whatsoever. He has to be a you know, 15 to 20 yard stem on a route to actually let that speed get, to get up to speed and actually have that put some fear in the cornerback. Uh, you know, put some fear in the cornerback. So I, I think that's the biggest difference. Also, Fuller, just a more polished route runner, a little more sudden in his routes all around. Shark, when he does have to cut, when he does have to, you know, hit a hard angle, loses some of that speed. It's really those vertical silo sort of routes where he's at his best. Yeah, so I know our guy Sam will always like, like to point out how good Calvin Ridley, Alabama wide receiver, was at running routes and knowing the leverage of cornerbacks and then working off of them. He always called Chark the opposite of that, you know, just kind of running through guys <laughs> yeah. to get where he wanted to. But the deep threat, 
is legitimate. Uh, third rounder, Ronnie Harrison out of Alabama. Another play to you know, add depth. You, know, you talk about this defense and not saying, hey, they need this, they need that. They're loaded in the secondary, and Ronnie Harrison fits that classic strong safety in the Jags cover three type scheme. He plays in the box. He did a little bit of that at Alabama, played a little dime linebacker. I just love the way the guy plays the game because he's got such a good feel for zones and for timing up blitzes. Just does a lot of really little things subtly well on the football field. Yeah, he's a very physical player. I thought he could even be transitioned to linebacker at the next level. I doubt the Jaguars ending up doing that because of how often they do use a box safety in that cover three scheme. So another position though where it's kind of the theme of the draft for them, not a need. He's not going to step in and start right away. Barry Church already fills that role. So another guy who can develop down the line, add, and you don't necessarily have to re-sign Barry Church you know, because his price tag and free agency was that high. So I do think uh, another pick that we had the value of Harrison as a second rounder, they get him in the third, so a pick that I like. Yeah, definitely like the pick with Harrison. Another interesting one was fourth rounder Will Richardson out of NC State, an offensive tackle who last, who last year had an 89.6 PFF grade, has a lot of off-field issues, but when you're talking about taking a chance in the middle rounds, from a pure talent standpoint, he could end up becoming a steal. No, that was the thing. We would have gone to bat for him a lot more because of the, the way he graded, because he's athletically and physically can hold up at tackle in the NFL, but off-field issues, got to spend him multiple times there at NC State, some drug-related stuff. So that's always something that's in the back of your mind. As that's probably why he ended up in the fourth round. He's a second, he's a day two type talent. And if he puts it all together, you know, if he doesn't you know, get in trouble at the NFL level, he's a guy who could very well outplay his draft status. All right, let's go to sixth round pick, Tanner Lee, the quarterback. And a lot of people thought, to? <laughs> yes, we have to break down Tanner Lee a little bit. A lot of people thought that the Jacks could look at quarterback in this mm -hmm. draft. And, and they waited until the sixth round to get Tanner Lee. We're not terribly high on Lee. He was 36th out of 37th among draft eligible quarterbacks at just avoiding turnover worthy plays. Has a cannon for an arm, but doesn't always have the touch to yes, go with it. This is fair. That's so a very fair assessment. <laughs> let's check him out at the Senior Bowl. It kind of sums up a couple. Uh, plays that you know showed what we saw at Nebraska, but also at the Senior Bowl. We see just a short area pass where he tries to zip it through a linebacker. Not a great decision. One of those places where you do have to show some of that touch. And even though he has a big cannon for an arm, here's a deep ball. Michael Gallup getting a step on the DB, but a poorly underthrown pass. So Tanner Lee, some accuracy issues, too many turnover-worthy plays but has a good arm, and I think that's what the Jags are hoping for in this developmental prospect. Yeah, it's a developmental prospect who shares a lot of the same weaknesses as Blake Bortles, which is almost uh, you know, counterintuitive. Uh, it's almost uh, not a pick I would have gone with. So Bortles, <laughs> Bortles we, you know, not the most accurate guy, has mm -hmm. some decision-making issues throughout his career, but uh, still uh, many steps ahead of where Tanner Lee has been. 73.4 oh, yeah. PFF grade last season. But overall, looking at this Jags draft, it might not have the immediate impact. I think you made that point extremely well, but a lot of guys that add depth, and it sets the Jags up to maintain a strong roster as yes. their team starts to evolve, and you can't pay guys every single year. These guys should be stepping in over the next couple of seasons. It's your Jacksonville Jaguars PFF draft recap, and it's all been powered by PFF Edge and Elite.